I say that if we get the concept of God right, everything else falls into place. Mm -hmm. On the other side of it, if we get the concept of God wrong, nothing else matters. Right. So for that reason, uh, Sister Linda, right, we respect you for coming here, appreciate you coming here. Yes. Thank you. We need to always find out what is the correct concept of God. What was brought by all the prophets, obviously, you know, introduced by God. So absolute oneness of God without anyone outside of God being divine was the concept that every prophet introduced to their people. So we have to be really cautious if someone says, you know what, God is God with the divine attributes, but then this person also has divine attributes. That means divinity means we are saying this person is God. You're not spelling it out, but if I say that, you know what, this entity is divine and this entity is divine, I'm saying that both of them are gods. If they are two gods, that means that voids the monotheism that God introduced through all the prophets. So for that reason, I really appreciate what you're saying. But then if someone is coming with that concept, I would bring them back to the Quranic concept of reintroducing the pure, pristine, monotheistic belief of absolute oneness that was preached by all the prophets and reintroduced by God through Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. Do you understand this, Linda? I, I think I find following much of what you're saying. and and. I, I, I'm sure there's a little bit of deviation between our our concepts and so forth, but I believe and I agree with mm -hmm. so much of what you are saying in terms of uh, the divinity of God and, and and God alone. Yes, and and I know that that's where we part a little because we do believe in Jesus Christ. We don't say He's God. We believe He is. God's son. The so, son of God. so what do you mean by the son? Okay, I mean I have three children. Right? I have two sons. Yes. I mean I know that son, my son is different than me. It is. So, do you mean son, figure of speech, or do you do you say son in a literal way? I, I literally, the son of God. Son of God means how? How is somebody a son? Like from the human mind point of view, a son of God is means God begets a son. Yes, well, we... What comes to your mind when you say God has a literal son? What does it mean? That he is uh, divine. Who is divine? God well, or the son? Well, God is divine. Okay, God, oh, that's easy. That's yes, understood. That's right. Fine, yeah. And then, but because he is, because Jesus is his son, he has the attributes of the Father, of God the Father, and and that he also came to earth as a mortal man because he was born of Mary. But we believe that he was conceived through the Spirit and that he is God's son and he's, he's um, uh, divine, if you will. I, I, I'm trying to, I don't know if I should use another word, because of God and and human because of Mary but they they work hand in hand God the Father and Jesus his son mm -hmm. but we worship God we we respect Jesus so you don't worship Jesus we don't we don't worship him but we we uh, worship God and we um, we believe of course uh, this is a difference too we believe that Jesus dis, uh, atoned for our sins, but we also believe we have to do our part too. But we believe it's through mercy that all we can do, and we still couldn't make it back mm. without His atoning sacrifice. So, 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 can we go back to the Son of God concept? Because you know, again, if we get the concept of God right, everything else falls into place. You know, actually, if you take the word Son of God and look into the Bible dictionary, the Eastern Bible dictionary to be exact, under the word Sons of God, the, the dictionary says that anyone who is a righteous person, a pious person, used to be called as Son of God, mm -hmm. as a figure of speech, not as a literal son, because right, even in right. the Old Testament, 
you can see that they have many, many sons of God. For example, David is called as the son, not just a son of God, he's called as the begotten son of God, David. In the book of Psalms, chapter number 2, verse number 7, David is called as the son of God, right? Jacob is called as the son of God. Angels are called son of God. Peacemakers are called as, you know, children of God. Do you believe yes. that you are a son of God? No, no, because uh, God is God. I'm a creation of God, right? I'm not a son yes. of God. We don't have, because, well, th because that's where it becomes confusing. If we say that son and daughter, then instead of having a figure of speech way of saying it, people will start believing it in a literal way and uh, very soon they are given uh, divine attributes and very soon then you have multiple gods. So what we say is we are creation of God, we are not sons and daughters of God because it avoids diluting the concept of God. Okay. I hope you understand, right? Yes, yeah. I, I, I understand the distinction that you're making. Yes. Even though I do believe that, yes, I'm, a, I'm created. I'm, I actually believe I, we are created in God's image. Do you believe that God is would have a form like we do, uh, not flesh and bones, but mm -hmm. that he... Some form, right? Yes. So, so what we believe is that there is a passage in the Quran, chapter, uh, actually it's a chapter, chapter number 112, and I will just quickly recite it for you, English translation, okay, just to make it easy. <laughs> It says in that chapter 112 that say he is Allah one and only. He is eternal and he is needed by all. He begets not nor his begotten and there is none like unto him. So we say that God does not have a nose and two eyes and one tongue and you know form like this. Because if we limit God by a form, that means he would be dependent on the space and in time and he will be dependent on the creation. Number one, what we say is that we cannot conceive God, how God is. If we say that God is like that, then God is not like that. Means a physical form if you attach to God. Okay, okay. I was just curious. Is yes. That your, when you think of God, you know, what do you, how do you picture him, you know? And, uh, so, and I think of him as as a father figure, if you will, and, mm -hmm. and um, of course, perfect. He's 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 the only perfect person or being mm -hmm. because we are imperfect because we live in an an imperfect world, right? And so forth. I don't want to keep you. I know you, you've taken a lot of time. No, no, to no. Talk so, have you I'm, eaten? Did you eat? No, I haven't. I, I got here. I got here too late. I mean, I just got here before I came in sure, to, sure. to speak to so, you. So, so, so just to summarize, right? Are, are you from here? Or do you live Chicago? Here? Okay, so you're a guest here. Okay, I'm a guest, just like you. But okay. uh, they assigned me to speak, so I came That's here to speak. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so what I would suggest is Mary. Not Mary, sorry, Linda, right? Yeah, that's fine. <laughs> Mary from the Bible comes to my mind, that's but Linda, right? right? Yes. So it's important for us that we need to identify and embrace the concept of God that God has introduced through every single prophet. So when we look into the Old Testament, not a single time God said that I have a son who is also divine. Not a single time, right? See, if God has a son which is divine, it would have been mentioned in the Old Testament. Not a single time. Even in the New Testament, when Jesus mentions about himself, he never ever said that I am the divine son of God. But in a figure of speech, people called him as a son of God. It's a figure of speech, not as a begotten son. right? Because if God's son is also divine and God is also divine, you end up with two gods. <laughs> right? From a logical point of view. So to do away with this confusion, God in reintroduced through Muhammad, peace be upon him, and with the Quran, that who is God and who is not God? What is the guidance to follow? And what is the path to paradise? And I would really, really invite you to study Islam, study the Quran, pray to God, Linda, always, you know, God, guide me to the truth. I know there is a truth. There is one faith, one right faith, one right way to go to paradise. Because after we die, every single person would have to stand in front of God. And God would be asking on that day, what kind of belief that you had? What kind of life that you had led? We cannot come back again to this world. So it's important we only have one chance.
God sent you in this mosque today with a sign. Meet the Muslims, ask the question, pick up a copy of the Quran, and then you will come to the right faith, and that we say is the faith of submission to God. In Arabic, it is Islam. Riley. Riley, okay. Riley. Yeah, so I just had a question. Uh, you talked about uh, absolute monotheism, right? Um, and how the Quran and the Bible supports that. And you pointed to Deuteronomy 6-4 in Mark 12, 28. Yeah, and other passages. Yeah. yeah. Um, but the Bible also clearly teaches that God is three in one, I think. And so, and I think we see that in Genesis 1, mm -hmm. as well as in John 1. What so did they do say? You, how do you reconcile it? Okay, so in John 1. Oh, uh, the beginning was the Word, the Word yeah, was yeah. with in God, the and the Word was, the word. was God. Okay, yeah, okay. Yeah, and the Word was God. Sure, and sure. If you read the rest of John, he shows that Jesus is the Word of God. And the Word became flesh. Yeah, and the Word became flesh. And verse number 14. Yeah. So he is, yeah. So Jesus is the Word of God. And so in the beginning, mm. when God was speaking, creation, He was speaking through the Son, through Jesus, and then it also shows that the Spirit was hovering over the waters. Okay. Uh, so Jesus is God. Yeah. So God was speaking to God. Yeah. So there are God two gods. Was speaking through God. So there are so, two gods. So there's not three gods. No, two. It's, but... Well, there's two gods, and then there's the Holy Spirit. And Three. Genesis shows us that the Holy Spirit was hovering over the water. So who was speaking when when uh, it says in Genesis? God created the heavens. God and the created earth. the heavens and the earth. And who was speaking that? God. Who? Through. So if Jesus is the Word of God. No, was that the Father speaking or? Who was speaking? The Father was speaking through the Word of God. So Jesus. The Son. So Jesus was not speaking. No, he wasn't. But so then there are two gods. No, no so there are not two gods. But look, God is uh, three in one. Wait, James, right? You said? Riley. Riley, okay. Riley. So, Riley, yes. if I'm saying right now, okay, Riley, delicious lunch is waiting for you, yes. right? So, I'm a host, I'm saying that to a guest, right? A friend yes. of mine, you, yes. correct? So, you are not me, I'm not you. Yes. But if you say that Jesus, that you are also a host, and I'm also a guest, right? Yeah. We cannot mingle that because if you are the host, then you are not the guest. Yeah. And if you are, if I am a host and you are a guest, that means we are two people, two separate individuals. Yes. So if we take that logic to its logical conclusion, are you saying that God Father is wholly 100% God and Jesus is 100% God, you end up with two gods? No, so, so it's not two gods. So, no, without bringing both. theology into the picture, just from the logical, rational yes. point of view, yeah. see if God is speaking to some other entity. Yes. Some other entity, right? Yeah. God is not yeah. speaking to himself. But you have to bring theology into it. If we're talking about God, we're talking about theology. Are no, but not? one individual is speaking to a second individual. Yes. So that means the reason there are two is because one and two Yes. would make them two as separate. Yes. If there are two separate 100% God, that means we have two gods. So. Right? No, because. Why not? He is triune. So he's three and one. Who? God. God, the God of the Bible. So is Jesus triune? Yes. So he Jesus. part of the triune God. There's three, three persons, mm. one God. So, so there's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. So none of them are complete gods. They are. They are complete gods. So if three people are complete gods by themselves, you end up with three gods. You don't. Because yes, you do. If you have three glasses of water, three yes. cups of water, right? Yes. Three bottles. If all of them are complete, 100% one bottle. We can, we can one start bottle, walking huh? to eat. Just so you know. I don't, I don't want to hold you up for No, no. Uh, so we can start there there may be a long line. So okay. I'm just giving, trying yeah. to give a... You know, Riley, a simple analogy example yeah, so yeah, we can yeah, understand. Yeah. So three, if you have three, three bottles, bottles of water, of water right? Okay. Uh, that means uh, you would have uh, three separate bottles of water. Yes. That means there would be three bottles. Yes. Three gods. Yes. Suppose if each bottle represents God and God and God, yeah. uh, they are not one bottle, they are three bottles. Yes. Not one God, but three gods. So then we end up with three gods. 
So, we don't. What gifts? So, <laughs> if, if we look at scripture, if we look at the Bible. Um, so, so logically what I'm saying makes sense, right? Now we yes, have to go no, to the no, scripture no, and I, see. I see. Okay, fine. I see, I see what you're saying. So, sure. But, so, let's go to the scripture. Yes. So, in the beginning, God mm -hmm. created the heavens and the earth. Mm -hmm. The earth was without form and void and darkness, was over the face of the deep. The Spirit of God, or and the Spirit of God, was hovering over the face of the waters. Mm -hmm. And God said, let there be light. And there was light. And God saw that the light was good. And so we see, if we... Far from John, that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word then became flesh and dwelt among us. Okay. The Word of God is Jesus. You know? Okay, fine. So there's yeah. a theory. Okay, fine. So, so, so let me ask you this then. Uh, they are clear cut passages in the Bible, right? Yes. So they are like explicit passages and implicit passages. Yeah. Doesn't every explicit passage speak about the oneness of God? Yes. Like, for example, like every single prophet of the Old Testament. Yeah. May that be Isaiah chapter uh, 43, verse mm -hmm. number 10 and 11, yeah. Isaiah 45, Deuteronomy 6, 4, Deuteronomy yeah. 23, right? Yeah. Uh, every single passage, they speak about the absolute oneness of God. Yes. No prophet came to preach Trinity. Even Jesus, peace be upon him, when people asked him, as I give the reference, Mark 12, 29, yeah. He explicitly mentioned about the oneness of God. Here, O Israel, the Lord of our God is one. Yes. Correct? And um, He alone we should worship, He alone we should love, admire, right? Yeah. Yeah. So, <coughs> if that is the case, no other passage of the Bible should dilute this oneness. So, so the Trinity concept should not dilute the oneness concept. Okay, so if we believe the word of Jesus, right, there in Mark 12, where He repeats, the Shema, mm -hmm. which is Deuteronomy 6 4. Should we also not believe the words of Jesus in John 17 or John 15? Okay, John 17. I, I and the Father are one. Uh, John 10 30. Yeah, yeah, John 10 30. But then that's an implicit, that's not an explicit. Because but, one, but oneness can be in many different ways, right? Okay. Oneness can be like in purpose, correct? Suppose if I'm one with the leadership over here because we want to help out, you know, our yeah. wonderful guest over here. So I'm one with that person, right, standing up there. Yeah. I'm not the same person. We are not co-equal, co-eternal. I don't have the same birth date yeah. and the same attributes yeah. that he has. So oneness can be in purpose and oneness can be in person. So if you have two options, now it becomes unclear, ambiguous, implicit. So what do you think? Jesus so, is saying, yeah, yeah. So it's a, the yeah, yeah. So there's oneness in purpose because if you look into the verses before that, the context before that, yeah. uh, from uh, John chapter ten, verse number one, all the way to verse number like twenty-nine, yeah. you can find out that God is saying that no one can take uh, uh, the disciples from my hand, no one can take yeah. the disciples I'm from my father's shepherd. hand. Yes. Yeah. So in that, they are both one in purpose can also be seen, you know, the same word for one. Yeah. It's also used for the disciples in John chapter 17, verse number 21, yes. that they're all one in us. Yes. How are they one in us, all the 12 or 11 disciples? Oneness in purpose, spiritually, so figure one, of speech. They're one by the Holy Spirit. Because if we abide in Christ, then we will be one with the Father. Because Christ mediates. Exactly. So, between see, why are we giving, why are we giving this interpretation on this oneness of the disciples compared to the oneness between, uh, you know, Father and Jesus? Because, because Jesus the same, invites us into His presence. No, see, he now calls he, us to abide with Him. That's what He says in John 15. No, no, sorry, I'm just <laughs> curious. Yeah. Sure, sure, yeah. we can stand no up problem. here. So again, we're what talking I'm talking about the oneness of God and how the Bible teaches that God is trying to do uh, And so, so we're just we're just yeah. talking. Right, right. So again, it's important. You know, Jesus was not a Trinitarian. Yeah. If 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 Trinity was the main concept of God, then at twelve Mark twelve twenty nine. Yeah. Jesus would have mentioned, okay, fine, there is God up there, but I am also that God, and Holy Spirit also that God, that is the right concept of God. He didn't say that, he repeated what Moses repeated. 
which is absolute monotheism. Never ever in the whole Bible Jesus ever said that me, the Father and the Holy Spirit, we are co-eternal and co-equal. He yeah. never said that I am God. He never said that I am uh, God the Son. He never made any one of those, uh, you know, statements. But the yeah. positive statements that he made is that I am a prophet of God. He said, I am hearing the word of God. He said that I of myself, I cannot do anything. He said that worship should only be to uh, that creator. And he also said in John chapter 17, verse number 3, you are the only true God. So those are explicit statements that makes him to be a prophet, not God, son of God or divine.